In the early days of 3D gaming, developers were throwing all kinds of special effects in their games in ways we hadn't seen before. One of those effects, which stuck in people's minds, is the watery ripple that appears whenever Mario jumps into a painting in Super Mario 64. Today, we're going to make our own magical paintings in Shadograph, and if you stay until the very end, I'll show you a twist on this formula. Let's jump right in. I've set up my scene like this so that I have a blank quad, which I'll apply the effect to, a light shining on it, and a painting texture ready to go. To start off, we'll add a Vector 3 property called Ripple Center, which is going to be where the ripples emanate from, and then take the difference between that and the world position, because the ripples will expand in a circle from this central point. We want to control the number of ripples that appear at a time, and we can control this here by adding a float property called Ripple Count, then multiplying it by the distance. The direction of the ripples is important too. If we leave it like this and do the rest of our calculations, then the ripples will actually come in from the edges. So we'll pass all of this into a 1 minus node to reverse the direction. The ripples will move over time. As you might be thinking, we'll need a time node. We'll also add a float property called ripple speed and multiply that by the time so that we can control how quickly the ripples spread outwards. Now we can add the time and distance metrics together. We're going to eventually use these values as a height map to offset the UVs of the image, but right now the value is just continually going up over time, so that height map won't work just yet. So we're going to pass it into a cosine node, which will take those distance and time values we just calculated and oscillate them over time. I'll actually multiply by 2 pi, or tau, beforehand, so that the inputs to cosine are converted to radians, meaning a ripple speed of 1 corresponds to a full oscillation cycle per second. The values output by cosine are between minus 1 and 1, which is a bit too strong, so I'll remap the output so the new minimum is minus 0.5. For the final ripple value, we'll multiply by another new float property called ripple strength, then divide by the existing property ripple count. This should give us good values to work with. What we've created so far is a sort of height map where the higher the values are, the higher up we want the ripple waves to be at that point. Shadergraph has a normal from height node which lets us convert height maps to normal vectors, which is exactly what we want to do. We can use these normals as a UV offset by passing them into a tiling and offset node, and then we can finally sample the base texture, another new property, using those offset UVs. Finally, output the RGBA values from this sample to the base colour on the master stack, and we should see some fantastic ripples on our test painting. You'll have to tweak the material values until you get a speed you like. Let's test out the positioning of the ripples by quickly making a script which lets us click on the screen, cast a ray towards the painting, and set the ripple position of the painting's material to the hit point of that raycast. We can also make a coroutine, which decreases the strength over time so that the ripples fade out. Now we can set the ripple position to anywhere on the painting we want and enjoy the paintings in the same way Mario did back in the late 90s. Before we get into the extra twists, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. Their names are on screen right now. And if you learn something, I make tutorials like this all the time, so make sure you subscribe to catch my next one. For today's extra twist, we're going to take these ripples and do something different with them. In the intro, I described them as watery ripples, so we could quite easily apply these to a mesh on the floor and use these for actual watery ripples. Since a shader can only display one ripple, you probably couldn't use it for a rain effect, but it'd certainly work for a small waterfall, a dripping pipe, or any other continuous flow of water. And if you're interested in making water effects, check out my Wind Waker stylized water tutorial. Until next time, thanks for watching.